All right, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Borthwick, VK3 UBM from uh, Melbourne. I came across to the conference overland arriving uh, New Year's Eve, uh, an epic four day crossing. Uh, I'm actually a volunteer at the conference, um, so I haven't been able to participate this morning in your um, open radio sessions, but I've been given a few hours off to come in here and um, show you a video that I made of my participation in a VHF UHF field day um, about 12 months ago. Uh, there was an FT817 floating around. That would be handy if I could um, perhaps use that as a prop. Any chance of that? Okay, it's left. Um, what I'll do is I'll just bring up... Got one there? So this is the band plan for the electromagnetic spectrum in Australia. Fantastic infographic. Oh, look at this beastie, that's great. Um, shows how finely granular the allocation of uh, access to spectrum is in Australia from very low frequency, uh, short wave, all the way up to multiple tens of gigahertz up here, 300 gigahertz. Hope you can make out some of the numbers, if not, doesn't matter. Um, as amateur radio operators, because we're licensed, because we're understood to be able to use the spectrum responsibly and not cause interference to other uh, often quite critical emergency services users, broadcasting users, we have access to interestingly and, and usefully wide chunks of spectrum all over the place, from HF where you can talk to people on the other side of the world with a mere few watts and an FT817 and an antenna thrown over a tree up into the gigahertz range where equipment is home brewed, you can't buy it off the shelf, you're dealing with surface mount components, you're dealing with exotic printed circuit board materials made of Teflon, uh, very exciting stuff. If you want to play above uh, the 70 centimetre band here, then you're really into home brew. You're making a device called a transverter or a transmit receive converter. And what that does simply is multiply the input frequency to a much higher output frequency. So when I go and play in a field day with my FT817, which um, one of the great features about this radio, actually this isn't an 817, this must be an 857. Um, the 817, which is a little bit more compact, has two antenna ports, one on the front and one on the back, and you can arbitrarily assign bands to those ports. So you can get up the top of the hill with your two meter antenna, have that connected to the front, make a contact on two meters, and then change up to the 70 centimetre band to 432 megahertz and make a contact on the rear. When you want to connect to your transverter, so say work a station on 1.2 gig, the way I was doing it before is I would literally have to disconnect patch cables, plug it in, uh, flick a switch that would trigger the transverter when I hold down the push to talk, switch on the microphone, and that works if the station's there and your gear's working, but if they're not there, then you have to undo all that, go back to two metres, which is your liaison frequency, and hope that this station you were trying to work has not moved off and worked somebody else who's a bit more organised in frustration. So it occurred to me that I could switch between all this gear, uh, route the RF signals uh, with relays, and then I thought, well, why don't I manage the, the band shifting and the frequency uh, using the serial port or the TTL port on the FT817, when I discovered there was actually an Arduino library to talk to the FT817, then that led me to um, develop the project, which you'll see in the video. This is the two metre band, 70 centimetre. You can see where the CB radio service is in relation to two metre, uh, up into 1.2 gig land. Uh, this is the 2.4 gig or 13 centimetre amateur band. This, this little block here is ISM or industrial scientific and medical. So that means enormous industrial microwave ovens potentially. Um, the whole spectrum can be a total train wreck. Uh, there's no guarantee in there that anything will work. And because uh, of the uh, sort of ghetto nature of it, that's where they've crammed Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, 2.4 gig audio video senders, uh, sp spread spectrum radio control, bizarrely. I mean, everything's in there. Um, you know, it's a real free-for-all, and as we all know, as Ham's the noise floor is coming up uh, in that band, because of all those devices, it's becoming increasingly difficult to make contacts. This is um, 9 centimetres, or 3.4 gig. 
six centimetres, five gig, and this is where we've got 802.11a and AC and potentially 802.11n if it's in the five gig band, so that's all Wi-Fi stuff up there in the ISM section. And finally, 10 gig. Um, now this is a screen grab of VK3 ALB, Lou Blasco's um, setup for going out and playing in field days. He has a separate FT817 for each band of interest, so that's about 5 gram worth of radios. Uh, each one of those connects to its own transverter. Um, what my system does, because I, I use just one uh, intermediate frequency radio, one transceiver, I use relays to switch all that around, and because I'm using an Arduino to shift bands and remember what frequency I was on, it makes this sort of backpack operation, which I'm interested in, much more feasible. Um, this is uh, another shot of what uh, Lou calls his tower of power, his stack of FT817s for a field day operation. And um, this is a wider shot showing he's actually got a caravan with all this gear in it. Um, and I'm not, cri not critical of this approach at all. It's one e example of uh, what a dedicated VHF, UHF field day operator um, invests. But I'm more of a casual enthusiast. I love operating radios outdoors, but I have other interests and I have other interests within ham radio. Um, so what we'll do is try and play my video now, I think. Can you give me a hand with that, Stephen? And hopefully we're going to have audio out of the laptop that will go through the um, lecture theatre PA and um, also be streamed live and recorded on hard drive, which is what I spent this morning setting up at 7am. All right, here we are. So um, this is about 20 minutes. I will probably fast forward over um, some of the more mundane contacts that I make later on. But um, thanks for listening and um, we'll have a look at the video now. Hi there, it's Mike, VK3. We will do it a different approach. Uh, yeah, I've got audio anyway. Now I'm just going to drive it. Oh, right. Oh, right. UBM up on the summit of Mount Anarchy in Victoria. I'm uh, using the trig point here as uh, support for my very modest antenna system. I've got a uh, horizontally polarised uh, omnidirectional antenna, a squallow design for two metres. This very simple dipole for 70. <laughs> I've got uh, 2.4 gig, uh, this is just a commercial Wi Fi antenna of the Yagi from Hills in Australia and uh, lower down is a uh, bicubic quad uh, which is made out of PC board. So one of the uh, issues I've faced going out portable in these uh, contests is I only have one ring, an FT817, uh, which is fine for 2 and 70 because it's got two antenna ports so you can have for example, your two meter antenna connected to the rear antenna port and your 70 centimeter antenna on the front and it's easy to QSY between those two bands. But when you want to move up to 23 centimeters and 13 centimeters, you need to disconnect your antenna and plug in your IF cable to your transverter and you need to swap over the PTT lines and remember to do that and I often forget to do that in the heat of uh, the competition and get a bit flustered and I uh, can miss out on the contact and it also requires patience from the stations at the other end. And one of the biggest issues is uh, if you're having trouble making a contact on higher bands then uh, it's hard to drop back to two metres to do your liaison, particularly if your uh, IF frequency is on two metres which is where my 23 centimetre transverter is. So uh, what I've put together is a a microcontroller that can interface with the rig and with the transverters and switch some RF relays to route the signal either out to the uh, 2 metre and 70 centimetre antenna or through the transverters to the 23 centimetre or 13 centimetre antenna. It's based on a library for the Arduino, an FT817 library which includes commands to talk to the rig. 
So I was up till fairly early this morning uh, putting that together and to my surprise it actually works. Hopefully I can work some stations on um, 2.4 and uh, 1.2 and actually demonstrate how it works so I can change between 2 metres, 70 centimetres, 23 centimetres and 13 centimetres without having to um, reconnect anything and that's a huge advantage and means you can move up to those higher bands with confidence and if you're having trouble making the contact it's much easier to drop back to two metres to your liaison frequency and try and sort out the problem and it means that the station at the other end is not uh, waiting quite so long wondering what's going on. It's not as good obviously as having multiple rigs but you can't afford to have a rig for each band and it would also be more weight and more power so this is I think the next best thing using a microcontroller to try and unify all the gear so you've got push button switching between bands and management of those signals. Now what I'll do is I'll power cycle the controller. It actually needs to uh, set the radio to two meter liaison frequency for a start just to bring the two systems into sync. So if we get around here before the system boots, what we should see is the display change to 144.150, which it's done. And I might uh, unplug my headphones so we can see if there's anybody there. VK3ER okay, so there's VK3ER calling CQ on the 2 meter liaison frequency 144.150. Now, if we wanted to go up to 70 centimetres, press the 70 centimetre button, and we're on 432.150, where there's actually contact happening. Or well, there was. Now, if we wanted to go up to 23 centimetres, uh, David's transverter has a IF on 2 metres. It's uh, 145. 1296 transverter if you can see that in the grass so if we press the uh, 23 centimeter button we'll go up to 435 sorry <laughs> delete all that okay 145.150 and that's also changed over the relays that are in this um, shortbread tin that um, switch between the 2 meter antenna and the 23 centimeter transverter. Now if we wanted to go up to 13 centimeters to um, my transverter, my IF uh, is on 70 centimeters, so we'll go up to 435 and we're on 435 150 and the relay's clicked over and that's bypassing the 70 centimeter antenna my um, modest dipole and that's now connected to this uh, VR antenna and as I mentioned uh, the push to talk signal which is coming out the back of the rig here is also routed to the correct transverter so you're not simultaneously keying up both transverters so uh, hopefully you've been able to see the display I really can't tell unfortunately uh, in this viewfinder in the bright sunlight but if uh, you haven't been able to see it I'll, um, I'll fake it up at home now I might uh, try and make some contacts and uh, can see this set up in action VK3YFL this is VK3UBM VK3 YFL, VK3 Uniform Bravo Mike, thank you for the 59076. My number to you, 59029. 59029, over. Yes, sir,
AFL VK3 UBM. Can I just grab the uh, the grid square there, please? Okay, all received. Uh, so I'm just exchanging grid squares there. That's a maidenhead locator, so it just says where I am on the surface of the earth and where the other station is. And uh, in a field day, that's uh, relevant in terms of scoring. Just stand by, please. And you also exchange a serial number to prove uh, that you actually made the contact and then you submit a log to the people running the contest and they, uh, they check it to make sure that you're not um, being naughty. My number to you, 59030, 59030, received. Yeah, right, Okay, should we give um, 13 centimetres a bash? Uh, we can, 2403, uh, 170. Okay, sounds good. I'll just not let you do Alright, here we demonstrate the magic box. Press the 2.4 gig button. And go up to 170. And uh, hopefully, There'll be a station there. <laughs> However, we do have to plug in the 2.4 gig transverter. So then, uh, on a power saving drive. So we'll just lean over and do that. And hopefully we'll be a station calling. And we'll swing the uh, antenna around. Uh, VK3 Mike Yankee, VK3 Mike Yankee, do you copy VK3 Uniform Bravo Mike? VK3 Uniform Bravo Mike on 13 centimetres, over. Uh, VK3 UVM, VK3 Mike, how do you copy, uh, go Yeah, very good signal, over. Excellent, I'll give you 59074, 59074. Thank you for the 59074 VK3 Mike Yankee. My number to you 59031, 59031 over. Uh, sorry, just go again there, please. Yeah, one of us is drifting off frequency a bit. I'll uh, I'll give you a long over and see if you can uh, net me in there. Uh, VK3 MY VK3 UBM. Yeah, I've got you again. Yeah, no, you're drifting up slightly. It might be warming up a bit. Yeah, look, I only just plugged the uh, the transverter in. I'm trying to uh, save battery power. I've only got a very modest battery and and a reasonable amount of gear to run over. Yep, sorry, I, uh, it was my mistake. I thought we were going to 100, so, um, <laughs> so that was a delay there, over. Yeah, no problem. Anyway, uh, if you're 59011, so uh, if you'd like to run a number by us. Yep, you'll be 59036, 59036, over. Okay, QSL the three, follow that in, hit the six, and hit the go, stay QSO. Okay, thanks for the contact. Yeah, terrific signal on 2403. Great. VK3UBM, VK3UHF. Okay, 73s. Alright, back to 2. Okay, so what have we got inside the controller? 
uh, a push button front panel, an Atmega 8 8 bit microprocessor from uh, Atmel with 8 kilobytes of flash RAM, two read relays on the board, 5 volt read relays, the push to talk signal from the Mini DIN 8 accessory connector on the FT817 comes in on uh, this beige cable here, which is an old Macintosh serial cable. That uh, signal is presented to the two relays, and depending on which transverter is selected, will be routed out to the push to talk input on the transverter to key it over from uh, receive to transmit mode. These two additional uh, read relays over here on the right are just mounted uh, dead bug style on a scrap of PCB and they handle switching the RF relays. While the surface mount RF relays have 3 volt coils, they require more current than the microprocessor can provide directly. So these read relays take care of uh, switching power to the coils of the RF relays. And we have a 7805 down here to provide the extra current. The uh, microcontroller board has its own 78L05 surface mount regulator uh, underneath on the track side of the single sided PCB. That can only provide a maximum of 100 milliamps. Uh, this is the uh, Molex KK connector which uh, goes to the uh, front panel. This is just a standard uh, board that I use for playing around with the AVR uh, microcontroller uh, using the Arduino software environment. So uh, there's nothing very uh, complex here at all. A microprocessor and uh, four relays and uh, push buttons for selection of the band. VK5 SR, do you copy VK3 UBM? Yeah, right there. Uh, VK3 UBM, but anyway, we did copy, however. Yep, VK3 Uniform Bravo Mike, VK3 United Bravo Mexico received. Roger, VK3 Uniform Bravo, Mexico. VK5 Sierra Radio, good afternoon. You're not strong, but we are copying you okay. Uh, just a QSB, so it's pretty severe today for some reason or another. Yeah, Roger, Roger, and okay, I'm on the low power. Well, we're on a little more power than that, but uh, uh, we're on a bit over 100, so. There you go, probably uh, it makes a lot of difference. <laughs> but anyway, your batteries will last longer than ours, I'm assure you of that. Over, over. Uh, the 1.2 gig transverter I borrowed from uh, David, who edits for the VHS UHS section of Amateur Radio Magazine, VK3HZ, so that's his. The 2.4 gig transverter was built from uh, kit PCBs from VK5 EME, minikit.com.au, um, which are all beautiful little surface mount, um, uh, local oscillator, a times 4 multiplier chain, a transverter board itself. Sequencer, um, so all four, all four boards are in there, and it's a, quite a compact little um, uh, eddy stone die cast aluminium case. The output is only uh, 80 milliwatts on 2.4 gig, and I made contact for up to 100 kilometres um, during that contest using a Hill Yagi Wi Fi antenna with 16 VBI chain. So it works really well. Is there a point now that you would control over which um, antenna? Uh, it could. I'm not bothering to do that. Um, I'm just presetting the radio to its front panel memory structure to send two meters out in front, 17 meters out in back. I certainly could do that. I had, you know, I'm like literally finished at about 2 o'clock in the morning on the contest and I had to reach out to 
great to see him taking his arm up more back because um, I've been on him some calls the ball and some stuff and all. But he wasn't previous to get the ball to work in the in the home life of the rink and stuff. And he was telling me about pizza that why do you show us some calls? And <laughs> <laughs> we light it up and also when. Um, so, are there any more questions from that? Um, all right. Um, thank you very much.